How many are ready for the word of God? Let me tell you something. The word that God has for you is for you today. Hey, I don't know what he's going to preach about. But we have our school. He just gave me the title. Word of God, that's it. Me and us don't usually go through these things. But as I was as I was worshiping, the spirit of God was moving in me. And um, as the worship team was singing, God was telling me, whoever came here tonight, whoever made the effort to be here tonight, all of you had a choice whether to be here tonight, the word is specifically for you. Specifically for you. So make this word yours today. How many can say amen? No matter what distractions happen around you, listen to the word of God today, and I'm sure we will come out of here. How many can say amen? It is a privilege and honor for me to present my brother. He's like my brother, Pastor Nelson Diaz. Same thing. 
Just the author of this book is talking to a specific people, and they don't really like to use the word God. That's why he says the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, remember, is kingdom of God. Amen? God. The parable is literally something cast alongside. That's what it means. Something else. Jesus' parables were stories that were cast alongside a truth in order to illustrate that truth. So he's giving you a story, a made-up story, but with a biblical truth in it. So there's no name on this man or anything. It's just a story that he made up in a sense, but it's giving you a biblical truth. Amen? Mm -hmm. good there? So I want to speak about the hidden treasure. See, it was hidden. So you cannot find it if you're not looking for it. So this man has found this treasure. Obviously, he was looking for it. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, many of us here in this room have found that treasure. Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on, maybe some of us have not found that treasure yet, but I think the percentage is real small here. I know all of you at least have heard about the treasure. And many of you have already found that treasure. Amen? Amen. Praise be to God. God is ever present in our life. But unless we're looking for him, we will never realize that he's there. Come on, come on. You have to look for him. And he's always there. Amen. It says it's a hidden treasure, but it's not hidden. Mm -hmm. He's always there. Come on, yeah. Jeremiah 29, 13. A famous verse when you use me, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Amen. Have to put our, all our heart into this. Because many of us have found it. We know about it. We have not found it. We know about it. Let me put it that way. We know about it, guys. But we really have not found it. We need to take our time like this and he dug it out and dig it back in. Don't, don't get it, don't get it all, you know, why he dug it back in. It's all it's, it's just a story. There's no, you know, the dude was malafe, he didn't want to give it to nobody else. So he was trying to con the people that were on the land. So it's just a story. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Paul preaching in Greece says in Acts 17, 26 and 27, from one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and boundaries of their land. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him. So it is not far from any of us. God is not far from any of us. He is dead. He has not left your side. Be He's always been close to us. As a matter of fact, unfortunately, we're the ones that put distance. We're the ones that push him away. We're the ones that put borders. Mm -hmm. God is a gentleman. He's not going to go where you don't let him go. That's right. He's not going to do what you don't want him to do. We push him away. We put distance between and us. Amen? Yes. See, a lot of times we like to customize our relationship with God. That's, that's, that's what's up. That's what's up. Where's, where's my, uh, oh man, my GTA players when you customize the cars. Okay? That's the only game I know about customizing. I, I go into the shop and put my own in that sports game. Sports games, you customize your lady, yeah, yeah. your jersey, right? Yeah. We like to do that with our relationship with God. The supposedly relationship oh, with God is supposedly. Because the relationship with God, you can't customize it. Mm -hmm. Either you accept this treasure yes. or you don't. Yes. Right? Yes. But when you start like, God, take this, but don't take that. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Glory. Yes, you know what? I like that part in the Bible. I don't like that one. Yes. Do you want to customize the relationship with God? It's not going to work. Oh, I like what that scripture says. Yeah, I can do all things through the Christ that gives me strength. But turn the other cheek. Mm, let's go. I'm going to turn the other cheek. It's crazy. Yesterday in the concert, I went to see Marriott City. It's a beautiful night. A little too much for me. 
<laughs> I like I like what we have more, you know what I mean? There's just so much going on. Just a, just a little side note, I don't want to get sidetracked, but so, many of the words I couldn't even understand what they were saying. So what happens here is, look, we're, we're, we're doing so much good. Praise <laughs> I got a venue. Some of the songs, I was like, what are they saying? I don't understand. <laughs> the words were going, there wasn't even matching. But anyway, mm -hmm. I, what I was trying to get at is that we made a mistake on our seats. And I ended up moving this couple out of our seat, their seats, their seats. And you know me, I guess it's just my approach, but I said, you know, oh, no, I'm going to get rid of my seat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wrong, because the usher sent me there. And the dude comes back, and you owe me an apology. Oh, wow. I was like, whoa. I said, hold up, ain't, ain't, ain't this church in here today? You made us move. I'm like, whoa. But it took that one second to realize that, bro, I'm not the same guy. I'm not going to put this old man down. <laughs> my guy. It was not my fault. But you know what? My fault. I mean, in an instant, I, I, I knew that I couldn't. But that other me was like, get him. <laughs> Look, and his wife was such a sweetheart. I was like, miss, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, you're good. Don't worry about it. Right? Well, I say this because it's hard sometimes to turn the other cheek. <laughs> there's certain things that we like in the book, but there's certain things that I don't want to touch. I'd like to avoid that. Let me skip that. I can't do that? Oh, no. That's a biggie. No, no. I like doing that, though. Amen? Amen. Let me get a name for you. Where am I? Glory. Glory. Worship the Lord. Yes. Isaiah 55, 6 says, very famous verse, and I use it a lot. And I say this verse because when I'm talking about customizing our relationship, it's not going to work. But you got to seek God while He can be found. I think from day one that I've been preaching, I, I have this thing that I, yo, things are going to change for us. As a nation, as a God, God's people, things are going to change. We got it good here. But what about that day when everything switches up? You see little by little how the world is twisting things and changing things. There's going to be a time when he will not be found. So seek him now. And like I said, I know the, the percentage here in this room is high. But sometimes you just got to get re reminded. Amen? Yes. Glory to the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. That means that one day he will not be. I don't know about you, and I don't know how your theology and eschatology is, but I don't want to take no second chances. Yeah. I want to be out of the first trip. <laughs> Punch my ticket on the first trip. I'm gone. But even that worries me. Because scripture says that many people will talk to God and let your but God. And there's so many things in your name. And yet God says, get away from me, because I never knew you. So me even being here, sitting, standing here, preaching the word of God, I could lose my salvation. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary that I put in all this time and effort, and the one day I meet the king, and he say, yo, just to put it in my words, it's like, yo, it was not good enough. I never knew you. I was young. I know what it is to 
Like I said, sometimes you think this is too much rules or regulations. Man, something's got to change. And I get it. Look, I grew up in church. I know. It was hard. But I'm going to be honest, man. I make the best choice. Glory. Amen. Me as a father now, looking at my boys, and I'm not trying to, you know, I mean, compare apples. Or, you know, I mean, I'm just not, you know, I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. I think my mom, if I have, look, I love my mom. Let me see if I can say this without. <laughs> She's watching. <laughs> she will be watching. <laughs> Praise be to God. Remember they just said one time there's some old ladies in church you want to walk by? <laughs> That's one of those old ladies. God shows her things to people that, and, and at her job, people just walk the other way. Mm -hmm. Don't let her talk to you. Mm -hmm. God uses her in a mighty way. And I love my mom. But I was thinking about, this is earlier today, about our relationship. I said, man, she didn't push enough. Right? Because I got this late. I found the joy of this treasure late. Even though I knew about the treasure, even though the treasure was given to me as a young kid, it was shown to me, they told me about it, I think they scared me <laughs> when I was little. Oh, you know what I mean? But that's all right. God will use whatever he needs to use to get you here. Amen. I think the fear of, of staying behind, the way they used to preach in the 80s, got me, you know what I mean? To understand that there's a God yes. and there's a hell. I don't want to go to that place. But I believe that she didn't push enough. She was soft on us. And that's what I, you know, what I'm trying to say is that that's why I really go, you know, we, we didn't, you know, we went through a lot of stuff that we shouldn't have. If she would have just pushed. Mm -hmm. But think about it as a parent, how much can you push? Mm -hmm. Right? Without pushing them completely away. Yeah. That was my biggest fear. And I bring this up because at the age that I came here to church, man, these guys are already, you know, I'm like, yo, how, how much can I push? And I know if I told you, I probably said that at one point. I, I got home, I'm like, you know what, I'm done with you. Let them do whatever they want. But the Spirit told me, yo, this is still, they still under your authority. Yeah. So I said, you know what, I'm going to push. Yeah. Just give yeah. me the wisdom on how to push. Yes, right? Because we can be a little dumb about it, too. <laughs> we can push, push, and then forget it. I mean, ask God for the guidance. Amen. Right? Now that you parents here, yeah. someday you will be. Oh no. <laughs> Who? It's mom. From Seattle? I should have picked up. You should have picked up? We're in service right now. Get the most people.
because I didn't understand what that treasure was. But because I didn't know what I had, what I could have had at that time, I made some bad decisions. Decisions that even to this day have a little residue of, of all the stuff that I did, right? If you imagine, and you tell me about 20 years now in January, that's big. Praise God. Praise, God. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. But you know what? For many years, anytime that phone would have rang like that, her mind went somewhere else. She wanted to know who was calling me. Anytime I, I made that turn in that corner by myself, she wanted to know why I'm going by there. Why am I working up there? Right? Because I destroyed my trust at home. Right? Because of the decisions that I made. Because I didn't even look for the treasure. I didn't understand the treasure. Right? I wouldn't have made my own moves. You know, I, mean, I thought that what I learned and what I see around me, that's the way to operate, but that's not the way to do it. God is everything. God should be everything. This man took and sold everything to buy this treasure. Everything. It didn't say a little bit, it didn't say a quarter of it, it said he sold it all to buy this field for this treasure. We look for recognition of people, likes, and all of this stuff in this day, of, in this day and age. <coughs> Yet the approval that matters the most, we don't seek. The approval of the one that matters, we don't seek. Come on, yes, yes, yes. Man sold it all with joy. I have a question for you. What is your appraisal of the kingdom of God? Hey, hey, hallelujah. How do you see its value? I wore my chain today just to show you that I can take this and go to a jeweler and get an appraisal. And he'll tell me how much it's worth. I stopped wearing my chain no months back or it's too crazy out there. <laughs> I don't want to get taken my name off. <laughs> but what do you afraid as the kingdom of God? Mm. What is the value you put to? Wow. How do you see that? <laughs> see a jeweler can tell me, yo, it's, yeah, it's worth that. What is it worth to you? The kingdom of God. Scripture says, Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also. Yes. Where is your heart today? Wow. Look, it's been an exciting eight weeks. This is the ninth week. We have seen beautiful things that the Spirit of God has done here. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have so much breakthrough here. But yet, we go back to the same thing. Many of us pass up front and go back to those doors the same way that we came. You had an experience, but nothing changed out there. Eight weeks, and we're still at square one. For some of us, not all of us. Nothing changed. I didn't pick up my Bible this week. I didn't get into prayer this week. All right? You should have left with some joy out of here to, and last week, the week before, the week after, you know, all these weeks, and just changed it up for God. And went all in for God. And as soon as you got back home, you went back into the same thing. The same routine that you had. And God was still in the back. I'm just speaking facts. At least one person here. What, what did you read this week? What did you read last week? Nothing changed. It was just that moment. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, yo, look, bro, we will do this a hundred times. I, I'll pray for you a hundred times if you come to the front. That's not, a, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that, but you know, I'm saying there's got to be a switch. There's got to be that says something. Look, I'm done. I'm going to take this treasure serious. I'm going to take God serious. I'm going to give it all to God. I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to give him everything. I want to put everything in. All right. Everything that I have is his. Yes. Yes. 
I can't customize my relationship with him. I can't just pick and choose what I want to do. I want to be all in for God. And look, I, I need to work myself. I'm not excluding myself. That's where it hits me first. Praise be to God. That's what I said when I got into that space of me and him. It's like a wrestling match. I'm just taking the hits first. Because I know there's some things I got to get rid of. I know there's some things that I know that they're bothering me. I know they're hindering. I know that they, they're holding me back. I just put an excuse. Oh, I'm bored. Oh, I'm in. I need to get away from that. I need to give it all to God. I need to just, just cut it off. So if you don't see me on social media for a while, you know why? I'll be, I'll be the first one, man. I get stuck on the reel, man. I'm bored at work. <laughs> Imagine if I would have invested in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Or I would have invested in prayer. Yes. That same time that I invest in the reels. That same time that I invest in the video games. That same time that I invest watching the other stuff. How is it, God, man? Why I got to go back to this? How is it that we give God the promise? How is it that we give him the last of everything? Why is it God can't be number one? I'm, I'm talking about me. have an experience. One of the, the, the most things I learned in this, these, these eight weeks is that it's an everyday thing. Yeah. Everyday thing. I gotta go check that house. I gotta clean it up. I, gotta, I can't let yes. the enemy come in and start yes. messing things around. I gotta stop with the excuses. I gotta stop with the oh, I'm just bored. Oh, I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm at work. No, 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 no. Bro, God has blessed me in a, in a workspace that I can open my Bible freely. It yes. is me and him. Not everybody has that, you know, that gift that I can open it freely and my take my desk. It just sometimes you know, I'm doing I, I, most of the times I write my sermons at work. Nobody bothers me. And I knew this this week was gonna be a blessing because everything went south for me this week. At home, at work, everything just went, you know what I mean? I'm like, boy. I said, why me? But I know why. Because he's just pushing. To see if I crack. I'm not cracking. Amen. I'm not cracking. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. We worship Amen. you, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You are worthy of all praise, my God. I ask again, I'll ask it a different way. What is it worth to you? See, for God, He laid down His life for you. He was ready to die. You know, He died for you. Right? He, died. He, he died for you. How much, that's how much he was worth to him. That he put his life down. Now there's no price on that. You can't tell me there's a price on anybody's life. Man. He put his life down for all of us. What is he worth to you? And this in, in the story of the parable of the man. For this man, in this story, he meant everything to find this treasure. And he sold all he had. Philippians 3 8 says, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of surpassing work of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Listen to this. For whose sake I have lost all things. Apostle Paul is so, so, oh my God, I don't even know. He's vicious sometimes. I consider them garbage. Everything that he accumulated, everything that he had, he considers it garbage. Here to knowing God. Everything. Jesus tells his disciples in Mark 10, Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother and father or children or land for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution and the age and in the age to come eternal life. Oh, we're gonna suffer. But that price you gotta pay, because you're gonna have to cut some relationships. Well, the reward at the end. You wanna put your you want you wanna play with your salvation? You wanna play with eternal life? See, the problem is that we're stuck in this life. We just think, you know, this is more important than anything. And this is just a small part of everything. 
Do you want to play? Bro, so we're going to have to leave the relationship. We're going to have to move things. We're going to have to cut things away from us. And he just said it right there. For his sake. You guys are too serious. Nah, come on, let's go. Good. Glory. Amen. If you don't know why, you should sacrifice it all to him. Ask around. Can I ask you why you sacrifice it all? Can I ask you? Why would you sacrifice it all? They said, I would do it all over again. But I would do it earlier. Me, any person. When I did it at 16, but I'm going to give you something. At 16, and I, I, the Spirit talked in my life. I will never forget that. I can't tell you what he said, because well, I'm old and I'm forgetting stuff. <laughs> I remember the quote. And I told you this story, right? I'm, I'm in church, I want to look at girls. Went on, and I said, Oh, I got to go to the front. Mm -hmm. I didn't even hesitate. I went right to the front and I gave my life to Christ. But I didn't have what you have. Yes, he had. Yes, he had. Everybody's like, Oh, congratulations. That's it. My mom gave me a Bible. That was it. Nobody told me anything else. Nobody discipled me. Nobody said, Look, we got to pray. You gotta read your Bible. You gotta fast. You gotta, you know, build the spirit. Because if not, as soon as the temptation goes, you're gonna run back out there. Nobody said anything to me. Sunday school was a joke. You know, we just talked about some stories, and the teacher was more crazier than all of us. <laughs> you guys got something so special here that we bring the truth. No matter who's speaking up here, we bring it how it is. We're not here to sell you anything. This is not a goody goody thing. This is not a feel good and, and all things positive. Nah, bro, this is a struggle. This is a sacrifice, but it's worth it. And it's so worth it that I would do it, oh my God, over, but I just, I, I would I could just take it serious when I was 16. But that time passed, I can't get that back. I want to make it now, bro. I want to make it work for me now. My car. Yes, I can. You worship you, my little kids. Like I said, my ignorance almost killed me. Yeah, I don't have that. To be honest. Every Friday, I have something special here. And like I said, many of us look. And I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay what happens here on Fridays. It's not about that. I don't want to, you know, misrepresent or, you know, maybe the way I'm saying it is wrong. You know, you can pass 10 times up front, it doesn't matter. We can do it 20, we'll do it 25, 30 together, it doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is it's got to be a change. That's good. That we pass up front, you feel the word of God, it touches, it talks to you. And we pray over you. 
But it's after you leave those doors. It's after you leave those doors. What you gonna do with that treasure? What are you gonna do with that, with that relationship with God? Are you gonna put it back on hold? See, that's what we're doing, many of us is doing. We open the line of communication and then we put it on hold. It's just it's too tough. It's too tough. I can't stop doing that. You can. But it takes time. Me and, me and Dave was talking about prayer. Right? When he said don't pray at night, <laughs> I looked at him all crazy. But it's true. At night, I pray to go to sleep. As soon as I put my head on the pillow, I'm praying. Because guess what? It works better than counting sheep. And I pray in the morning. Right? I got my routine in the morning. This morning after the concert, forget it. I was out. I think my prayer was just snoring. I got up, I got to go. I don't even know what I said. Watch me. Watch over me. But I had to build that. Many times at 4 in the morning, I was falling asleep on my prayer. I was snoring. I would get up. I, I prayed in the dark. But I built it. It's all about building and building and everyday thing. And I'm going to read a scripture today. And I'm going to read a verse today. And now I'm taking a chapter. Yes, I'm taking yes. two chapters. Look, that chapter was easy. Let me jump on the next one. That story has been really nice. Let me go to the to see what happens next. It's an amazing thing when you get in there with God. And the things that you start seeing. And like I said before, I said it last time. Yo, any question you have, put it through the Bible. It's such an amazing thing. But like I said, it's got to be a change. When you walk through those doors, something's got to click. Like I'm done. Let me take this treasure home. So leave with it today. I'm not done yet. Where was I? Yes. My ignorance. Yeah, I know about that. Luke 12:48 says, But the one who does not know and thus things deserve his punishment will be beating with two blows. This is the part I want to get. For everyone who, the one who has been, for everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. And I'm going to be honest with you, you have been given a lot. Each and one of you here has been given a lot. So there's no excuse when you meet the maker. Because you have been given a lot here. I'm talking about here, I'm talking about you chosen, I'm talking about me, I'm talking about yo, here, Dave, because I know Dave gets edified also. Here has been given, a lot has been given to you. There's no excuse for you. I'm sorry to say that. I didn't know. Oh my God. Again, I want to customize. So much has been given to you. And we'll keep giving, my brother. That's not a problem. I'm sure David's in the same thought. We will keep doing it. Like he said last week, he'll turn blue. That's what we're here for. And so God calls me to do something different and move me, then and I gotta go. That's different. But I will continue to do this. I say to you again, my sacrifice, the sacrifice of giving it all to God should be joy, not a burden. You should delight on giving everything to God. I'm going to close with this verse. This verse gets misused a lot. Because they don't read the whole thing. They use just one part. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. They use that verse of people that just don't know. And look what it says right after. Because you have been rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest. Because you have ignored the law of your God. I also will ignore your children. My people are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. It's not because you lack knowledge, it's because you rejected it. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. There's no excuse for me. There's no excuse for no one here. It's up to you to receive it, to take it with you, to treasure this treasure, to put all in it, not reject. Amen? Amen.